So I'm Helen Heslop, I'm in the Centre for Cell and Gene Therapy at Baylor College of Medicine where my clinical interests are in hemopoietic stem cell transplant and my research interests are in immunotherapy um, to treat viral infections post-transplant and to treat hematologic malignancies. Um, well, well, I'm a transplanter, I think just because um, when I was training and looking after patients with leukaemia and other haematologic malignancies, transplant was very early in its field, particularly in New Zealand, and it just seemed like um, a way in which we had a chance to provide a cure for patients who otherwise would not have been cured by the standard treatments that we had then. And I became very interested in the whole immunobiology of the procedure of replacing one person's immune system with another how you could avoid some of the complications like allergy activity and then how you could use the immune system to um, improve the outcomes by um, selectively expanding immune system cells that react against tumour cells or against um, infections that are otherwise a problem post-transplant. So I think it was just the interest in the procedure and then the opportunity to have a career where you could both care for patients and then go back to the laboratory and try and improve outcomes. The breadth and the depth of the book, um, since the first edition, um, and we still have some of our original editors remaining, particularly Ron Hoffman and Ed Benz, I think the aim is to really be to produce a very scholarly book that has um, a very in-depth look at every single topic that's covered. Um, I think what the editors have done with time is evolve the book to um, represent new advances in haematology and maybe move some of the content around between chapters because um, some things are now looked at in a different way because of new information. So I think it's been a very sort of responsive book to what's happening in the field. It's moved with the field, added new things, integrated other things and presented things in different ways depending on practice. Well I think there's been a lot of reorganising to look at what logically goes where and to, um, as I said, account for um, new information that might mean that some things fit better in a different place than previously. I think there's been a really concerted effort to improve the images in the textbook and our new um, pathology editor John Anastasia has done a fabulous job in, I think, enriching all the chapters that I was involved in by producing a lot of um, visual material that is available both in the written textbook and in various um, versions that you'd access online on your iPad or over the internet. So I think for um, residents and fellows who are presenting, a, who are having to develop presentations as part of their training, there's a really huge amount of resource material and visual material in there to help them. Um, I think it's a broad audience of haematologists and people involved in clinical and laboratory specialties that impinge on haematology. So I think it's trainees at all stages who are interested in looking at a particular issue in depth. So from a medical student who might suddenly, due to their um, classes, develop an interest in say sickle cell disease, they can go to this book and really get a lot more information in depth and a lot of other resources um, like the audiovisual. Um, enhancements that are in the book. I think obviously residents and fellows caring for patients on the floor who are looking for resource material to help them care for a particular patient or who are doing a presentation and then um, clinicians who are caring for patients. Um, it's, it's a resource that has a lot of information to help them do that or people who want to get some background information on a basic science area related to haematology. Um, I would say it's a very exciting specialty to get into. It's got lots of different areas depending on your precise um, interest. But I think it is a specialty where, first of all, there is lots of communication and interaction between the laboratory and the clinic, which you can either do as an individual or if you are more of a pure clinician, you still have the opportunity to interact with basic researchers and vice versa. I think a lot of new advances are happening in the field at the moment, so there's lots of exciting um, ways to um, establish research programs and um, I think there's just lots of opportunities over the next 20 or 30 years to improve further.